she reaches for the board, slides off the giant barn door as best she can. Good thing that chain is holding it shut a little bit. Huh. Weird. She keeps walking deeper in the basement. She's following on the heating dust. She goes back to the giant green furnace there. She needs a little heat in her house, I guess. He's all excited about that. <gasps> the furnace! And he crawls as fast as he can through some heating dust. I'm falling out yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> then he gets way deep inside the heating dust. And I can see his head. It's like sort of disembodied, just poking up through one of the heating dust. And he's staring right down like he's going to watch a movie or something. <laughs> We're just watching it. He's just waiting. And pretty soon she pulls a screwdriver out of her back pocket. She's a newspaper bag in her back pocket or lighter, stuff like that. And she pulls off the grate on the front of the giant green furnace. It's a huge olive green looking thing. And it thumps there on the ground, almost blows out her lighter again. <laughs> She's panicking a little. He likes that. I think he likes that. You know, at this point, I think it's good for him to indulge a little bit. So I whisper through the heat and vent. What? Get a little more violent. Come on, push this a little bit. Get to the meat of this thing a little bit because this is getting, this is dragging on. <laughs> so, he looks down the heating vent and waits. Joan reaches in her lighter and turns on the gas. And she puts her almost her whole body and her whole arm into this thing and reaches it inside there. And the gas is fluttering in her lighter. Come on! She's reaching there, it won't light, it won't light, and that's about a good time for Trickler to start chanting his things. Honey, stick your head in here, yeah, it's warm in here, come on, stick your head in here, I can rape your brain, mommy. Come on, put your head in here, mom and dad are monsters, they're watching you, they're staring at you, we all live in the walls around you, this house is inhabited, we know where you are at every moment, I can feel you, I have nerves all through this house, and every step you take, I can feel where you're walking, honey. Now come on, come on inside, stick your head in here a little bit farther, that's good, she's reaching in, she's terrifying, her hand's shaking real bad, and finally she just leans out of the furnace. She lights a whole damn piece of uh, newspaper on fire and creates a huge torch. She leans it inside, and I look inside, and they glimmer in heat dust, Sarah. Trickler's head's gone. Where did he go? She leans inside there with her piece of a uh, giant uh, burning newspaper. Uh, I scamper backwards a little. She must have heard me. Trickler. She must have heard me because she looks up. And she sees this little cellar door-like thing, this kind of small wooden door. And she stares at it, and it thumps in and out. She's looking at this thing, and I'm looking at it. And all of a sudden, it bustles, and I see down a weird farmhouse hall, hall, kind of. There's these wires dangling, electricity. <laughs> I can see he's swinging back and forth. He's got his head down, it's almost, his head, head's been chopped off or something. And he's got the white lab coat on, trickly down. <laughs> And a splash of shower blood comes up and lands on the back of his jacket and he turns around and stares right at her. And she flips the furnace lights up. She flies backwards, boom, bangs up against the wall. The sparks are flying everywhere. And she runs. The next thing I know, Trickler's right on her heels. And he's chewing right at her till he's saying, Yeah! And he's chasing her. She's running through the basement. And she's running. She runs and jumps and bangs right on that giant bar door. And she's going so fast he can't swallow her. She keeps going as far as she can. She's out through the double cellar door. They slam. But I am upside down in the heat vents. So I'm panicking. I'm scared sick myself. I can't believe what I've seen. I just want to get out of here. And I'm half upside down. Get me out of here! Get me out of here! And he comes up and juts his face in a military fashion. He's like, you calm down. Are you trying to sabotage what I'm doing? Are you trying to sabotage all this son? This is beautiful. Now you work with me or you work somewhere else. Because I need your help and assist. You're my doctor. I should be able to trust you in moments like this. Now come on. I want you to relax. Feel the deep breath of the heat vent on your face. It blows a hot air over me and I relax and my face goes placid and our faces kind of fall together. Now count us out of this. Okay. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six of the basement doors are closed and they fly. Four, three, two, one. This seems like an eternity since we wake up. I wake up in the office and Trickler's here with me. His stun starts shaking already and his hand's shaking. He's catatonic again. Oh boy, I'm exhausted after that. I'm like, God, I can go away. I can see it all, feel it all. Oh, well, I'd say we made marvelous progress today, Mr. Trickler, I believe it is. I close my file. 
plug in the intercom. Wait a minute. What? Wait a minute before you plug that in. We gotta go back right now. We got some time thing. We gotta do something fast because as soon as Ed finds out about it, we're in serious trouble. He always finds out he's gonna know she's over there. Well, I think we had enough for today, Mr. Trickler. I'm exhausted, and I'd appreciate it if we could end the session now. Uh, we'll have plenty of other sessions in the future, so I'm gonna put this up. Wait, wait a second. Please, don't send me back up there. I don't want them to know that I, my tongue's been loosed. If they know that, there's going to be all sorts of trouble in the hell day. Okay, all right, that's fine. I won't tell them a thing. And I go to plug back in the intercom. Oh. Huh. That's pretty good. Why did that trigger, trigger right in my mind here? I feel the pain in my pinky when I try to plug back in the intercom. Uh, <laughs> crazy. So I plug it back in. Hey, darling, will you please come get Mr. Trickler? We had it for a day. Mr. Trickler's like waiting right outside the door. I hope he wasn't listening in. I think that's unethical. And the door opens up. <laughs> and he walks in, and Trickler's panting. <laughs> and he reaches forward and grabs the edge of Devin, bites on the edge. And, <laughs> and he won't go. And I'm like, come on, Trickler, let's call it a day, please. And darling, I guess knows how to handle that. I don't approve, but he takes up the broom handle, <laughs> bangs it on the edge of the desk. <laughs> And he wheels him down the hall and he brings in this kind of stick figure like a little mannequin kid with his legs kind of wobbling and he dumps him in a chair. It's Mr. Bracer, my second patient. Brace boy, they call him big name. It's red plume of hair and his jaws gnashing. And I'm cleaning up the papers that trick would pull off my desk. Yeah, I'm looking at this monster kid they put down in the basement office with me here. And I hear voice of Trickler. Doesn't make any sense. I planted things in your mind when you're looking in the lamp down there in the basement, down there in the examination room. I planted files in your mind. I just want you to realize something. Mm -hmm. Race Boy is the one who invented the Lobotomon when he was very young. So I just wanted you to meet him. Lobotomized. <laughs> Don't worry. And so I go out the hall. What? Darling's wheeling a trickler down the hall. Darling looks back at me. You lost something? Uh, no, I was just wondering what, what's the deal with uh, this guy's face in here? He's got, you know, this thing on his jaw. Oh, he's a biter. Yeah, he's a real biter. You know, we got to lock that on so he won't bite his fingers off. You know, some of his fingers are missing. Yeah, see, he, he swallows them right down and never do find the bones. He'll bite anything he can. <laughs> he goes into the elevator. Yeah. Ride on up. Oh, I see. I go back. I go back to John's. She walks out of those double basement cellar doors. She kind of hugs the side of the house. She keeps her eyes on the door. She doesn't want anything to come out after her. She could have sworn something swiping at her feet as she went. And then she bumps into something. Ah! And she pulls out a screwdriver and <laughs> tries to fend him off. It's this big, tall, doofy looking guy with a giant brow up here. But hey, he pulls out his screwdriver like he wants to fight. <laughs> Adam Larson, electrician. Someone called a couple weeks back. I was just fiddling around in the brain center here of your, uh, you know, electric meter trying to get this house up to power here. Hope you don't mind. He digs into it. Gets his feet, fingers dangerously deep in these wires with all these crispy spiders and things. <laughs> Look out! All sparks are flying. I got to change a few fuses. Oh, you got one labeled here for the deep freeze. Uh oh. Oh boy, someone forgot to turn this off so many years ago. I'm afraid to tell you what your bill might be next time you see it. <laughs> oh, what well, she's really eating too. It's really twirling. That's weird. All the rest of the house powered down. Huh. Oh well, he goes and fiddles around here and <laughs> plays around with it for a while, changes things. So you're moving in, huh? 